chairman of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, I'd like to welcome you to the Society's headquarters here at Coates Crescent in Edinburgh. We are now in the members' room, and as you can see, in pride of place, is the portrait of Jean Callender Milligan, who is the subject of this film. When Dr. Milligan died in 1978, she left behind as a magnificent legacy the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, which she had helped to found in November 1923. Ms. Muriel Gibson, the secretary of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, can tell us something about the society in 1986. Isn't it remarkable that from that first small meeting in Scotland in 1923, the society has grown to its present dimensions? We have at this moment 150 branches and 500 affiliated groups throughout the world. But these figures won't remain valid because we are still constantly expanding. For instance, since this map was produced in 1981, we have established 20 additional branches, three of which were in Scotland and the remainder in other countries. And many, many more groups have affiliated to the society. We're constantly being asked the reason for the popularity of Scottish country dancing among so many varied nationalities. And I have no doubt that it's because it's an attractive, sociable recreation it has lively and appealing music. It can be danced by all ages, from the very young to the very old. And it doesn't need a knowledge of the language to be able to enjoy it. But above all, I believe that its popularity stems from the dedication, the enthusiasm, and the inspiring leadership of Dr. Jean Milligan. Jean Milligan was born on the 9th of July 1886 in Bothwell Terrace Hill Head, which is in the west end of the city of Glasgow. In 1886, Glasgow was a busy, thriving Victorian city in which the horse-drawn trams were still much in evidence. Apart from two short spells away from the city, Jean Milligan lived most of her life in Glasgow, her last home being only about one mile from where she was born. One of six children born to James and Isabella Milligan, Jean Milligan had three brothers and two sisters. Her father from Denny in Stirlingshire had trained as a teacher in Glasgow and by 1886 was a much respected headmaster in the city. Her mother, who was from Roxburgh in the borders, had also trained as a teacher in Glasgow. In fact, teaching featured strongly in the family Three aunts were also teachers, and Jean Milligan's two sisters were to join the teaching profession following the completion of their university careers. Jean's early formal education was received at her father's school, Garnet Hill School, later the Glasgow High School for Girls. She very much enjoyed her school days. We were very, very happy and we had a great deal of freedom. We had no uh, rules very much except the rules of decent behavior. And I remember my father, if my father came out and said, ladies, that was enough. That was enough. <laughs> Never got more than two for behavior. I'm afraid I was a wretch. I was passionately interested in everything to do with starting a hockey club and starting a this and starting a that, you know, and having great sport. Oh, I loved school. I loved school. And of course, I, my one desire on earth was to go to Dartford Physical Training College. The years 1905 to 1907 were spent at Kingsfield College, Dartford, taking a specialist course for the teaching of physical education. The college and its principal, Madame Marina Bergman Osterberg, made a deep and abiding impression upon the young student. 
and it was simply wonderful there. I never in my life, it shaped me as a person. I changed terribly. I became an enthusiastic worker, and terribly keen on my work. In fact, I loved it so dearly, if you'll not believe it, when I was home for my holidays, I, st I scored the days off till I was back again. It was wonderful. After a short spell teaching in England, the newly qualified teacher returned to Glasgow to take up an appointment as assistant instructress in physical training in Dundas Vale College, where her father had been a student teacher. Miss Milligan became principal lecturer in women's physical education in the college in 1917 and remained in that post until her retirement in 1948, having transferred with the college to its new home at Jordan Hill in 1921. As is confirmed by Mr. Alastair Aitkenhead, a former student of Miss Milligan at the Scottish School of Physical Education at Jordan Hill, and now Vice-Chairman of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, Miss Milligan was and is remembered still with great affection and respect by the hundreds of student teachers who passed through her classes. Miss Milligan set a fine example to her students as a teacher. She was a gifted teacher and she loved it and that showed. Of course nothing and no one ever escaped her notice not even in the largest class, but she made her corrections with humour and fun. In fact, she once said that a class was not a success unless there was laughter in it. For many years until her retirement in 1948, Miss Milligan organised the gala day for the college, and these were held annually in the college grounds at the end of the summer term. There were stalls and gymnastics and dancing, dancing of all kinds, but especially Scottish country dancing. She never missed an opportunity to promote the love of her life, but she'll be best remembered by all students and teachers of all disciplines for the fact that she introduced them to Scottish country dancing. During her adult life, and right until her death at the age of 92 in 1978, Dr. Milligan devoted much of her time and energy to Scottish country dancing. Her interest in Scotland's country dances she owed in the first instance to her mother, who had been a keen and expert dancer since the days of her childhood in rural Roxburghshire. In 1912, the Beltane Society was formed in Glasgow to preserve and promote all aspects of Scotland's cultural heritage, including its country dances. Not surprisingly, Miss Milligan was an active member. Assisted by college students and also by her former students, Miss Milligan arranged demonstrations of country dancing on behalf of the Beltane Society. Here is one such demonstration at a garden fete in 1914 at Queen Margaret College, now the Glasgow home of BBC Scotland. One of Miss Milligan's dancers at that time, Margaret MacDonald, who's been living in Canada since 1921, has provided a fascinating record in the form of this notebook of the dances she learned from Miss Milligan before and after the First World War. Glasgow Highlanders, Duke of Perth, and the Nut are included in the notebook. The Beltane Society, unfortunately, did not survive the Great War, but Miss Milligan continued to teach country dances to her students and to the children in the school she visited as a college lecturer.
The establishment of world peace in 1918 gave further impetus to the spread of ragtime and its associated dances in Scotland as elsewhere in Europe. Concern for the fate of the Scottish country dances when faced with this American invasion was shared both by Miss Milligan and Mrs. Isabel Stewart of Fasna Cloich, who enjoyed country dancing since her earliest days at her family home of Inverneal in Argyll. The fateful meeting between these two ladies, arranged by Michael Dack of Patterson's The Glasgow Publishers, is well known to members of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, for it resulted in the inaugural meeting of the Society on the 26th of November, 1923. In later life, Dr. Milligan often spoke about that first meeting and its consequences. Um, a room in the old Athenaeum. And we had a tremendous turnout to our intense surprise, and we never looked back from that. And now we have well over a hundred branches all over the world. It is really quite unbelievable. We have, we began at the right moment, and we, cur we seem to appeal to the imagination of the world. And I don't quite know what it is, except that I think it's that wonderful social feeling that the dances uh, ask for. An immediate outcome of the formation of the Scottish Country Dance Society was the publication of the first book of traditional dances. This included The Triumph, one of Miss Milligan's favourite dances. And it was very funny, you know, Mrs Stuart and I didn't always agree. The Triumph now, which is an awfully good fun, it's tremendously good fun, and in it, the lady comes up the middle in triumph between the two men, and then she and her partner uh, dance round and down to the bottom. Their moment of triumph is over. So Mrs. Stewart said, no, 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 it's just an ordinary pusset, one place at a time. I said, it isn't, Mrs. Stewart. You go down the middle and finish at the bottom. No. So, in our book, it came out with the ordinary pousset, but at the bottom, in small print, as a sop to Cerberus, she had put in, this may be done, poussetting down the middle. However, Mrs. Stewart was in the Highlands, and she met an old um, teacher of dancing, and she'd been talking to him, and she said, I'm sure I'm right in the triumph, haven't I? A pousset, the ordinary pousset, and he said, no, nah, no, nah, Mrs. Stewart. No, no, just the ends. You cannot go on being triumphant. So, I was very pleased. The Society has published many books of dances since its first in 1924. Its most recent in 1986 is Book 34, a collection of traditional dances.
The first concern of the society in its early days was to save and revive the traditional Scottish country dances. In addition to those which were still danced and remembered, Miss Milligan and Mrs. Stewart, assisted by other interested members, and after many hours of diligent research, were able to gather together other dances for publication from printed and manuscript sources of the 18th and 19th centuries. Miss Milligan loved the old dances, and only later, with some reluctance, she did concede that modern compositions might have some value in infusing new blood into a living and growing dance tradition. But she could be very critical of those new dances if they did not conform to traditional form and practice. But people just now have got a kind of passion for inventing dances. Now, an old dance, a really good old dance that has lived, flows yes. and becomes a part of the music. And it is a sign of a really good dance. You see, the music really comes first. The dance, mostly, should be written to the music. In the old days, it was. And uh, you will therefore get that lovely combination of music and movement, which I consider dancing. Her efforts to ensure a happy marriage of music and movement involved Miss Milligan and her helpers in hours of tireless investigation, searching for appropriate tunes. All over the world, hundreds of musicians, as well as dancers, owe them a great debt of gratitude. Miss Milligan had many favorite tunes, but one for which she frequently declared a special liking was Nathaniel Gow's Sir George Clark of Pennycook, to which his dance was to stay up in the air. The popularity of the newly formed Scottish Country Dance Society inspired Mrs. Stewart and Miss Milligan to organise a summer school, the purpose of which would be to ensure that the standards they had set would be followed and maintained by the teachers and dancers of the society. The historic town of St Andrews, with its ruined medieval abbey and castle, and its ancient university, is where the society almost every year since 1927, has held its summer school. Miss Milligan was devoted to the summer school and often spoke about it with great affection and enthusiasm. And at summer school, do you know, sometimes we've got 20, tw tw 12, 14 different countries there and nobody knows that the foreigners there. They mix so beautifully. It's lovely. 
It's lovely how they mix. There's no feeling. You see, now I'm calling it the Scottish country dance family. And when you enter the family, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are, you're a member of the family. And you've got to remember that and work for it and keep the, do it credit in every way. The summer school has remained true to the aims of the co-founders and continues to offer a full range of classes of instruction from beginners to fully certificated teachers. The dance begins with the first couple giving right hands, they cross over and then cast off and straight into a figure of eight, half figure of eight round, man between the second couple, lady between the third couple to finish facing your first corner. Let's try that with the music. Cast off one place, two step up. Half the of eight, round the two to three, and then go across to your top. Now this is the part you've got to watch. Carry on half the of four. Right in the side, left in the middle. Right in the side, go left in the middle, and there you are, the wheels up to there. Right, you got it there? There are also opportunities for those who wish to prepare for the Society's teaching certificate examinations. Realising that well-trained teachers are necessary to ensure good standards of dancing, the Society has awarded teaching certificates to successful candidates since 1924. The years following the end of the Second World War saw a great increase in the popularity of Scottish country dancing. This was reflected in the number of new branches formed within the society and in increased membership. This demand for Scottish country dancing gave Miss Milligan the opportunity to use her talents as a teacher, examiner, adjudicator and author. During the early 1950s, she also used film as an aid to teaching Scottish country dancing. The dance to be demonstrated in this film is the jig, the River Cree. The steps used are the real setting step and the progressive real step. The setting step is known as the Pas de Basque. Here it is in dance tempo. Each step occupies one bar of music. And this is the part of Basque in slow motion. Start with the right foot. Knees should be well turned out. Avoid springing too much and also swaying from side to side. And now for the dance. First man and second woman change places, giving right hands in passing. Second man and first woman do the same. All four advance and retire. Half right and left back to original places. First couple lead down the middle and up again. 
first and second couples change places with the poussette. From the earliest days of the Scottish Country Dance Society, Miss Milligan, often accompanied by Mrs. Stewart or Lord James Stewart Murray, the Society's president for many years, was a frequent visitor to branches, especially those newly formed. During the last 30 years of her life, Miss Milligan continued to make such visits, becoming a seasoned traveller and deriving enormous pleasure from the opportunities for meeting members of her growing family at home and now also overseas. She made many excursions to North America and in 1974 carried out an extensive tour of New Zealand, Australia and South Africa, the latter tour being undertaken despite the onset of painful osteoarthritis. The indomitable Miss Milligan, however, was not to be inhibited by painful joints. That passion for movement has been left absolutely clear. And while I can use my hands and my face and be dramatic and get them to, and my voice, you make so matter. I went all through New Zealand and Australia and, and, and South Africa, hardly able to walk. But I taught everywhere I went. I try to be as dramatic and as enthusiastic and as interesting and make it all seem a glorious piece of fun. I never feel like I had a success unless I've had a good laugh. 1973 was a year of personal achievement for Miss Milligan. She was named Scotswoman of the Year. The Glasgow Evening Times announced her success with the very fitting headline, The First Lady of the Dance. 1973 was also a year of achievement for the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society, as it then reached its golden jubilee. Throughout the year, there were many celebrations, but without doubt the highlight for Miss Milligan was the Jubilee Ball held in Edinburgh on the 12th of July and attended by Her Majesty the Queen and other members of the royal family. I don't think we have a more enthusiastic member than our royal patron. She, she uh, said to me at the ball, oh, she said, Miss Milligan, I just love Scottish country dancing. It's so interesting, it's so delightful, and you meet so many people as you dance. And I think that is really what has spread it so marvelously. In the year before her death, Miss Milligan's lifelong dedication to Scotland's country dances and to the music which accompanies them was recognised by the University of Aberdeen, which conferred upon her the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws and described her as a quite remarkable woman. We have now reached the end of our review of the life of Jean Callender Milligan. In such a short space of time, it has been difficult to do full justice to a life of such outstanding achievement. But I'm in no doubt that there are now thousands of people all over the world who are very much indebted to her for the pleasure and enjoyment they derive from Scottish country dancing. It's very fitting that the last word should be left to Dr. Milligan herself. Well, somebody said to me, why are you so keen on spreading a Scottish tradition elsewhere? I said, Scotland has always something to give. Yes. We're giving something beautiful to the world, and the world has accepted it.